All right, it looks like Nolan's first, so you guys go ahead. Nolan, what's going on, man? Oh, I think you're on mute, Nolan. What's up? Hey, I was just going to ask what's going on. Not too much, just, you know, enjoying a victory. That's right. A couple victory or a few victories in a couple days here. Um, you know, through this whole series, uh, was it nice to, you know, just get all those victories right in a row here? How did it feel to, you know, win a couple in a row? Oh, I mean, it's huge. Um, UNCW is like an extremely competitive team. So coming out with a sweep is, it's one of the biggest things you can do. Especially after a double header, a long day. Mm -hmm. Those games are easy to let slip away from you, but I'm proud of the way the guys competed. Never really gave any pitches. Did you have a good view of uh, Jackson's catch in center field today? Oh, it was unbelievable. Really? Yeah, he covered so much ground for it. It was one of the better catches I've ever seen. Does he make catches like that all the time, or is this something new? Yeah, I mean, Jackson, he practices those. Um, every day in BP, he's trying to do stuff like that just to test his range and try to get better. So commend him for that. Where is Jackson in terms of fastest guys on the team? Uh, one or two. I mean, I say him and Dom Johnson are tip for tat with each other. Do they have a race or no? You, you, no, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, might have to get that set up, though. That'd be, that'd be fun to watch. Yeah, for sure. Thanks a lot, Nolan. You yeah, Nolan, you, uh, you lead the team in walks. You, you had, I believe, three today. Have you always been so patient at the plate? Kind of take me through your mindset at the plate. Yeah, so, I mean, I like to get my pitch and um, really make the pitcher work. Uh, I know how they're going to pitch me a lot of times, and they're going to try to get me to leave the zone. But, um, I've always, yeah, I've always been pretty patient trying to get my pitch and punt what I know I can do damage on because – um, I don't like being too big like a single guy or whatever. Um, coach wants me to hit doubles and home runs, and I need the best pitch to do that. So I'm going to try to be patient and get the best pitch possible. You got a hold of one today. Kind of take me through that at bat um, in the home run. Right. Um, the kid made some good pitches early on in the at bat, a um, couple sliders. Um, I took a few that he kept low, bounced them, and then kind of got back into a hitter's count. And – he left me a fastball pretty close to the middle of the plate. And I just got a good swing on it. We keep asking Christian the same questions of, you know, what he's seeing at the plate and things like that. What have you seen from him uh, in his at-bats? Yeah, I mean, that that dude, he competes. Um, all he does is he just wants to win. And um, guys like that are fun to be around. Um, I know if I get on base, there's a good chance I'm going to score. So, uh, again, like, I feel like um, – Knowing if I'm patient at the play, if I get a walk with a guy like that behind me, there's a good chance that he might score both of us. So, I mean, he's just fun to be around, super competitive, um, doesn't give any at bats away, just a good teammate. Appreciate it, Nolan. But. Yeah, Nolan, uh, I think you're, you're really liking uh, hitting him over that batter's eye out there in center. I think that's two or three times <laughs> this year that you've uh, hit him over there. Is it fair to say that maybe like a little bit of a hot spot for you? Yeah. Um, Usually my best swing is through the middle of the field. So whenever I'm doing that, I'm getting close to dialed in. Um, it's just kind of like, I'd say that's my power slot. Um, I don't want to get too pull happy or too push happy. I'd say up the middle is probably just where I live the most. And you mentioned it was a pretty competitive series just in terms of how UNCW was just what, the, what they're doing. Have you ever seen a instance where two coaches from the same team have been ejected in one game like what happened today? Um, I have actually, uh, in summer ball, one of my coaches who wasn't even coaching the game at the time got thrown out and then another coach of mine got thrown out, but I mean, yeah, like you say, it's super competitive. So I'm sure their juices were flowing just like ours, but who wants to win? So. Yep. Thanks, Nolan. You bet. Anything else? All right. Thanks, Nolan. You bet. There is Robo, what's going on? How we doing? Doing pretty well yourself? <laughs> doing great. Doing great. Won another series, so. That's yeah. right. And that's what I uh, just talked to Nolan about. You know, this one a little differently. You win three in two days. Um, carrying a lot of momentum, it looks like to me. Uh, you know, how, how does the team feel right now? It's feeling good, man. I think, you know, kind of not not taking this weekend lightly, just kind of trying to get better and, 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 you know, obviously not take any opponent lightly because, I mean, those guys could play and, um, you know, I think the, the 
vibes are good. I think we're, we're ready to, to roll back into some more Big 12 play. But obviously, we got Oral Roberts on Tuesday, who's another good team. So, um, but yeah, we're excited to, to kind of keep rolling and hopefully carry the momentum. So, that's Coach Holiday's favorite word, vibes. He, he throws it around. Uh, I think he tries to be hip with the lingo. Oh, he loves but... it. He loves it. <laughs> well, uh, one of the guys who, you know, started all three games this uh, this series was Jackson. Um, you know, only got one hit, but it felt like he was making his, you know, presence known on every single game this uh, this series. What did you see from Jackson? He's just – he's a grinder, man. That guy, he just plays hard. Um, he does a great job out there in center field, and um, he's just, just a really good player. And it's fun to watch him him kind of play and, and you know, kind of mature as, as obviously he's a freshman. But, you know, he kind of plays beyond his years. He plays the game hard and obviously had a big catch today. So um, – and another, another good hit today that almost squeaked out for him. So um, he's, he's a fun guy to watch play, and the guy plays the game hard. So um, we love him, man. What did you think about that catch? It was it was a run saver, man. It was a, that was a big catch. Um, you know, I can't ask for, for anything more out of him. I mean, it's it's an incredible play. And obviously, you know, those hard hit balls, you don't expect to get caught all the time. But when they get caught, you're, you're, you're happy with it. Kind of, you know, head down, keep rolling. And, Kind of forget about the hard contact because he made a great play. So now it looked like he got a little bit banged up uh, after he made that play. Um, did you maybe talk to him, figure out what happened, or uh, what, what do you think happened after that play? Uh, you know, I, I think I, I don't know anything crazy about it. I think he's going to be all right, though. Gotcha. Thanks a lot, Justin. No worries. Uh, yeah. I think I have some more. Yeah. Okay. Um, an unintended consequence, kind of, of the field, I think. Um, is that if an opposing coach gets thrown out, he has to walk literally the entire <laughs> way across the field. What was that like from your viewpoint of, you know, you're just having to stand there and uh, kind of wait for both guys to get all the way across the field? Oh, man, I tell you what, it, it's it's tough. It's tough to kind of, you know, warm up, get ready to go, and then have that long delay happen. You know, it feels like the past two weekends I've been waiting more than I've been pitching, but, you know, that's how it goes. And, you know, eventually I guess it'll swing back and I'll get a game that moves pretty well. But past two weekends, it's felt like it's been delay after delay. but. Um, you know, it's kind of it's kind of funny. I wish there was a better way for them to get off the field because it's kind of weird having to watch them walk all the way out there. So we keep asking Christian all the same questions of you know, like what are you seeing at the plate and things like that. As a guy, I'm sure you've you've gone against him some in practice. Kind of what what does he bring um, as a batter? Uh, you know, obviously he's got big time power. Um, that's just kind of his mo. But you know, the guy can, he's got a pretty good hit tool too. The guy can hit. You know, obviously he keeps showing. Um, he's got a lot of he's hitting you know, above 330 right now. I don't know what his exact batting average is, but it feels like the guy just keeps getting hits in big spots. And, um, you know, we hope he can, he can keep it rolling because it's been fun to watch. Appreciate it. Yeah, Justin, I know you guys are getting uh, close to the end of this 12-game homestand. Um, I mean, before the homestand, I know you guys were having a little bit of trouble with uh, early on there, losing, I think, it was seven out of eight or eight out of nine, something like that. And now you guys are back here, and you guys have now won nine out of your last ten. Just talk about the, the, the good timing and just overall how you guys have really appreciated this homestand. Yeah. Um, you know, and going back to, to kind of who we played through those seven games, we played, you know, Vanderbilt, who's obviously a great team, and then Texas Tech. And, you know, we were right there, I think, swing away in, in every single game from, from winning those games. So, it's been good to kind of come back and feels like we've kind of hit our hit our little uh, we hit our speed bump and then we kind of made it over it. So I think we're over that hump and I think we're, you know, poised to make a really good run through the second half of the season. And you know, I'm I'm excited to to keep going and, and see where we end up. And I was I'm curious about something I, I asked Josh about this last night, but from a pitcher's standpoint, for Parker yesterday, he was getting ready on Friday to make a start Friday night, but then the game gets postponed and he has to basically push that back to Saturday afternoon. What's it like for a starting pitcher to prepare an entire day to start and then kind of have that push back and have to wait an extra day? Yeah, it's tough. And, and obviously, you know, a guy like Parker, who's pretty much a pro, just handle it the right way. And, you know, that's just kind of how you got to handle stuff like that. You can't really get upset at it because obviously it's, it's out of your control. But, um, you know, you just got to roll it over the next day, you know, get a good night's sleep and, and get ready to go. And, you know, obviously we've, we've kind of bounced around. I think everybody in the weekend's kind of thrown a different day, whether it's for the Easter weekend got pushed back or whatever. I think I've only thrown on the same day, two weekends in a row, maybe like twice now. So, but you, you kind of get used to it and you just get ready and get locked in the same way as you would any other day. So it's, it's not, it's not incredibly difficult, but obviously it's just kind of takes a mentality to kind of push yourself through it. Thanks.
Anything else? All right. Thanks, sir. Thank you, guys. Okay. Uh, I mean, I guess first, just theory sweep, winning three games in two days. Walk me through what you saw out there today. Um, well, we got off to a good start. Uh, anytime you can put a two spot up in the first inning, uh, especially with a homer, you kind of put the opponent back on their heels again, and you don't want to let a good team like this kind of hang around and, and make a run at you. So getting ahead early was good. Uh, we continued to score. Um, Christian had a couple of huge hits, obviously. Uh, no one goes straight away with a big homer. So our guys did a good job of, of establishing an early lead. The best he pitched well um, and pitched deep into the game, which was good. Uh, played air-free defense and at times exceptional defense and then got into their bullpen and, and continued to score throughout. So it's a good formula. Uh, it was a good weekend. A lot to be, uh, lot to be uh, encouraged by in terms of how we played. And, springboard into another important busy week yeah and I guess just all around you have so many guys in your lineup that have power but it's not just power it's not just hit home runs or strike out you, you got guys they, they can hit homers they can get base hits they can draw walks just talk about overall just how good your lineup is from top to bottom and just being good power hitters but also being patient and balanced well, we're getting there. Um, at times, we're very good. We, we still have uh, goals of becoming better and improving, and um, we created a number of opportunities. We had a lot of runners on base today. I guess we left 16 on. But you got to be doing something right to get those 16 on base, so that's positive, and we have delivered with some big hits, and we have uh, done a much better job of driving the starting pitchers of the other team out of the game earlier and getting into the bullpen. Those things have all happened more frequently as of late. Certainly in this series, they did um, maybe did it a little bit uh, better against West Virginia in game two and three, not so much in game one. But I think it's important in a series to get into the bullpens early in the series. Because then you have a chance on Sundays or game three, whatever day of the week it is, Saturday or Sunday, that uh, you might outslip somebody. And we've been in that position the last two last two Sundays to kind of outslug. So we're good, but we're not where we want to be yet. Um, so I like to trim the strikeouts down. I'm not a, a huge uh, strikeout tolerator, but it's a, a, it's a little bit of a trade-off at times when you hit a lot of home runs, you strike out a little bit. But we're doing a better job of taking walks, we're doing a better job of creating opportunities, and we're doing a better job of closing them out. Um, and we must continue that because we're going to see some really high-level pitching in the weeks to come. And uh, UNCW, they had, they had two coaches get, get ejected there. When's the last time you saw a, a team – that you were up against or either uh, anything like that. We've got two coaches from the same team get ejected in one game. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I hate when that happens, but it's part of the game, I guess. But yeah, nobody, nobody likes that. It's not, it's not the way you draw it up. And that, that walk from uh, the, the visitors dugout out there all the way to, to left field, that gate out there, that's a bit, a bit of a, a long wait in the game, huh? Uh, probably should put an ejection tunnel underground. That's something we left out of the original design. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. You're welcome. Yeah, Coach, we, we've asked you the same Christian questions all the time of, you know, what he's doing well and things like that. But how has he done it so consistently through this point in the year? Um, he's strong. So in order to be a consistent player, you got to be strong. Otherwise, fatigue sometimes will get guys. He's a very strong kid. He has work ethic, so he's consistent and that he does the work every day. Uh, but I think he's here for a reason, and that's to propel himself to the next level. And so he has a, a, a purpose. So in addition to being strong and working hard and having durability, he has a vision of where he'd like to go in his career. And I think that drives him. And I think all the, all the young athletes in college, you know, at some point you arrive at a, at a mental fork in the road where you're either all in on really wanting to become great and willing to do what's necessary, or you're kind of in on the experience, but willing to uh, just have a good time and see what happens. And sometimes when a guy just commits himself wholeheartedly to what he's doing, then you'll see him take off. So I, I compliment him for being all in on why he came here, his work ethic, his talent, strength, his durability. Um, those things are on display when you're around him every day of the week. 
this is the second time this season that you guys have kind of thrown a series together um, with a week in advance. Do you think that this can, that, you know, kind of the COVID era can kind of change how scheduling is done? Like for football, for example, there's games scheduled already for like 2034 and things like that. Do you think that this can change it to where, you know, you don't really need that much time? I think so. I think we're, I think we're all doing a good job of handling what's in front of us right now. But I think in an ideal setting, there's a lot of value in planning for managing your arrangements, managing the kids' missed days of class, managing budgets. You know, there's just a lot that goes into scheduling. There's a lot that goes into planning out the full year calendar to, to make sure that we're doing everything uh, responsibly, building a powerful schedule, managing our finances, you know, all that stuff that's part of the, the art of scheduling and running your team. I think we're very lucky at Oklahoma State, well, I know we're very lucky to have an administration that is has been so um, committed to the kids in this particular year to give these kids the experience they all deserve so that the COVID experience doesn't leave a bad taste in these kids' mouths, whether we're bringing them back to seniors or, or helping support us financially to play a series like this. Oklahoma State's been an all-star when it comes to how we've handled COVID and the testing and the experiences that we've committed to for the athletes. It's been fantastic. I couldn't be more uh, complimentary or proud to be associated with our department the way they've handled it. So I think I think this is a one-time thing. I don't think we want to. I don't think we want to operate like this moving forward. Appreciate it, Josh. Welcome. Hey, coach. How are you today? Good, man. Well, I wanted to ask a little bit about Jackson Kroll. Um, what did you see from him this whole series? It was his first series where he started all three games. Yeah, you know, Jackson's. Um, he he's worked his way in there uh, against right-hand starting pitching. Um, when with, with Caden being injured, it was a chance for somebody from the left side of the plate to, to get some starts in center and his practice habits and his attitude and all these things that kind of set the tone for where players at have just been exceptional. And so he, uh, he earned these opportunities. He played good. He did a lot of nice things. I mean, he made some nice catches, had some nice at bats, dropped out a few bunts, you know, did all the little things that you need a, a ball player to do to help you win. And so I, I think he did a nice job. I think that's a great diagnosis. I mean, he only had one hit in the series, his double today. But every single game, I left the ballpark, you know, thinking he had an impact on the game. You could see his fingerprints on it. What makes him such a valuable player? Well, he's fast. Um, he's gritty. He, he, he competes exceptionally well. Uh, pays attention to what's going on. And uh, he has some skills. He has some running skills and some contact skills and some base running skills that make the other team uncomfortable. And, uh, you know, I think probably what makes him impact the game the most is that he's very team oriented in his style of play. He does things that make other players better, whether it's moving guys up or getting on and creating opportunities for guys to drive him in or dropping down butts. He, he does things that are team oriented in that he, um, he's kind of a little bit of an operator. You know, there's, there's some speed, some butts, some hit, some discipline, tough to strike out. There's a little bit of all that going on. So he's, you know, he's just trying to find different ways to help us win. What did you think of that catch he made in center today? Nice catch. Great catch. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, he jarred his shoulder pretty good doing it, but it was a heck of a catch. Is that what happened? I mean, we saw him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. He yeah. yeah, injured his shoulder doing that. So hopefully he wakes up tomorrow and he's just sore. Hopefully it's nothing more than a couple of days of being sore. But, again, that's um, – you know, that's why you have a team and depth and multiple players who can do good things. You just got to keep putting uh, somebody in there that will answer the challenge. And, and we have other guys if he's nicked up and trickles nicked up. We got guys who go in there. So we get the, the healthiest guys and be ready for Tuesday. Well, thanks a lot, Coach. Congrats on the sweep. Okay. Thank you, guys.